Good evening to all the parents, educators, and students who are joining us online this evening. My name is George Labossier, and I'm the commander of the Winnipeg Police Service Community Support Division. Our school resource officers get the opportunity to engage with students and teachers throughout the school week. And they routinely present on materials related to safety to the students. However, we rarely get the chance to connect with the parents, grandparents, caregivers, and we know you're people of great influence. And for this very reason, we have prepared a session intended specifically for you. We hope you enjoy learning more today about online safety. And we very much look forward to your feedback, which will follow this presentation. I'd like to turn it over at this time to Sergeant of the School Education Section, Darren Modis, who will provide the land acknowledgement prior to the commencement. Thank you and enjoy the evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sergeant Darren Modis with the School Engagement Section, and uh, very happy to be here today and uh, help provide this for you. I'm uh, going to start off this with a land acknowledgement uh, that we will do on behalf of the Winnipeg Police. Um, we'd like to acknowledge that we live and work in Treaty One territory and the homeland of the Metis people. We acknowledge that our water is sourced from Show Lake 41st Nation. I wanna just say, before we go, I'm gonna be turning you over to Constable Orlando Budahan. He's uh, well-versed in providing Zoom presentations and a bit of history is during uh, COVID, we uh, took on ourselves doing uh, Zoom presentations so that we could reach everybody because it was difficult with the way the numbers were. And uh, we're gonna continue that because we realized we had such a decent reach with that. So we, I'm going to turn it over to Orlando. He's going to provide the presentation. And uh, we're going to do, uh, at the end of it, a question and answer through the chat. So if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat. We'll be moderating the chat. And we're going to try to provide you with the best answers we can at that time. So I'm going to turn it over to Orlando right now. Thank you, Sergeant Modis. Good evening. I am Officer Orlando Budahan with the Winnipeg Police Service. I wanna thank all of you for joining with us today in our citywide online safety education initiative. Now, just a little bit about myself. I've been a police officer for 20 years and I have three boys of my own who I am helping to navigate online gaming and social media safely. I was also a teacher before I became a police officer. So I know how important and relevant this type of education is with young people. Some of you may have already had presentations about this topic and have heard about the dangers and concerns facing young people being online. The problem with this topic is that technology is always changing and evolving, and we need to continue educating ourselves about risks with technology. In this presentation, we have consulted with a school psychologist, parents, school resource officers, and detectives in our Internet Child Exploitation Unit about issues we are seeing from elementary, middle, and high school age students on social media and gaming platforms. The feedback we are getting is alarming. We continue to have major issues with bullying, sextortion, and online scams on social media and online gaming. Now, a disclaimer before I go on. I want to emphasize that this presentation is for parents, caregivers and teachers, it is not directed towards young people due to the mature and sensitive content. We will be covering some serious issues with adult dialogue. In this presentation, we will be covering the following topics. Safe gaming, safe gaming and social media. Now I'm not saying we should completely ban gaming and social media platforms from our kids. In our presentations to kids, we discuss a lot of the benefits of these platforms, and we talk about how kids can use them in a safe and positive way. However, there are very dangerous elements to social media and online games as children can be exposed to inappropriate content and online predators. Throughout this presentation, we'll be referring to a term called sextortion. Sextortion 
or sex extortion is a type of blackmail where someone threatens to send a sexual image or video of your child to friends, family, or other people if they do not pay them, provide more sexual content, or do what they ask. We will be discussing how this happens in social media and online gaming, and also what to do if this happens to you or someone you know. We will also be covering some of the legalities involved in kids using these platforms and what can happen in a police investigation involving technology. And then we will have some time to answer any questions you might have. Now, this is an article from an Irish media outlet from August 16th, 2022. In this incident, parents bought their son an Xbox so that he could play a popular game called Minecraft, a game that many of you may be familiar with. Their son was constantly chatting on his headset and his father did not see any danger in it. The father explained in the article, they only bought their son the game Minecraft after researching the game and seeing it was age appropriate and not a violent game. He also admitted that they purchased their son an account on Xbox Live. However, they did not research what Xbox Live was. He goes on to say, we didn't do our research on that one and we didn't realize that Live meant he could play games with anybody in the world. The father kept the gaming handles or usernames of his son's friends online for safety. Their child was only allowed to play games inside of his parents in a public area of the house. So they were doing everything right. They didn't let their son take his devices to bed with him, which is where we see most of the problems with kids and technology. At one point, the father overheard a conversation between his son and another player. They were talking about meeting at a store two minutes from their home, which is a big red flag. He put the conversation on speaker and the other voice sounded like an adult male. The father examined the text chats between the two and he saw that the unknown male was asking his son to buy an iPad and also requested for his son to send him pictures of himself, another big red flag. The male also told his son to keep it secret, which is a third red flag. Anytime another player or online friend asks a child to keep something a secret, that should be very concerning for parents and parents should immediately get involved. The parents reported this to the police after taking screenshots of the conversation and police discovered that the male was actually a 29 year old man posing as an 11 year old boy. The male was also known to police for committing similar offenses. Now, why is this important? In this incident, the parents were educated about technology. They were doing everything correct by monitoring their son's gaming, as well as his chats and conversations. They were aware of red flags and their knowledge and supervision possibly prevented a child abduction or sexual assault. This is why education about technology and keeping the lines of communication open with your kids is so important. It is always changing and evolving and the dangers and threats are coming from places we normally would not be aware of. For example, many parents aren't aware that you can have private chats with anonymous people on music streaming apps like Spotify, or that kids are now using Google Docs as a form of social media. And this is what this presentation is all about, raising awareness of where possible dangers could be with social media and online gaming. Now, the example I have given is from Ireland. However, similar incidents like this are happening all over the world, and Winnipeg is no exception. In the first picture, this is happening in Winnipeg as well. The Winnipeg police ran a project called Project Hook over two weeks in March of 2019, targeting suspects of online child luring. Eight men between the ages of 20 and 46 were arrested and charged for child luring. In the second picture, January of 2022, a 39-year-old male was sentenced to 14 years in prison pleading guilty to numerous sexual offenses, including involving children and online luring. 
This is happening in Winnipeg, and offenders are using apps and games like Minecraft, Roblox, Instagram, and Xbox Live to connect with our kids. Now, admittedly, the examples I am using are extreme worst-case scenarios, and the majority of people your kids encounter on social media and online games are law-abiding with no, no intention of causing harm to anyone. However, the danger is still very real, and we need to talk to our kids and educate them about what can happen and what to do if something does happen. Again, keeping the lines of communication open and teaching them at an early age to come to you for help is of utmost importance. Most parents are aware that there are risks with technology and their kids. However, the amount of information is so overwhelming they don't know where to start. This slide shows the reality many parents are faced with when trying to educate their kids about safety online. Oftentimes, our kids know more about computers, smartphones, and gaming consoles than parents do. Kids are very smart and can find ways around many types of security methods. For example, app restrictions, kids can reset the device, Screen time control for Apple. Kids will delete the app, then re-download it so it won't shut off access. YouTube controls. Kids will send themselves a link of the video in their Messenger app and watch it from the link. Kids can also get around parental controls, parental locks by changing the time zone on their phones, parental lock on a router. There are numerous YouTube videos on how to remove the parental lock on a router. As a parent, you can't be complacent relying solely on parental controls and setting restrictions on devices. Although, the, although these are important, no amount of internet monitoring software will replace you being actively involved in your kids' activities online and communicating with them about being safe. Know who your kids are communicating with online. Now, you don't need a degree in computer science to keep your kids safe on the internet. All you need is a change of mindset from being a passive observer to being, being an active participant to your child's online activities. The games listed here are some of the most popular games with elementary and middle school age kids. Some of the games like Grand Theft Auto and Rust contain violent and mature content and have a mature 17 plus rating. However, some games like Minecraft and Roblox are not so obvious. They are rated E10 plus and are marketed towards young children. However, there are still elements to the game that parents need to be aware of. For example, public servers on Minecraft, multiplayer servers where they can interact with numerous people in the game online that they do not know. There have been reports of inappropriate language, cyberbullying, toxic gameplay, and sextortion, et cetera, within these public servers. It is much safer for kids to be playing in a private server with friends, classmates, and people that they know. In an article called, Do You Know How Online Predators Actually Target Kids? Writer Yasneen London refers to three areas that predators look for when targeting a child online, or whether they fit what's called the vulnerability profile. Number one, repeated use of curse words or inappropriate online communication. Predators look for this because it indicates potential for risk-taking behavior or low self-esteem, which may result in the willingness to accept new contacts or friend requests from people they don't know. Number two, time of day, time of day the child is online. If a child is logging on every night after 11 p.m., what does this tell the predator? That they are less likely to have adult supervision. This shows the predator that the child would be an easy target and he would have ample opportunity for a child grooming situation. Number three, other information they can source from the child or personal information. For example, hobbies, their favorite hockey team, their favorite player, their favorite music, etc. Predators use this information to build rapport and create a common ground. Examine your child's username and make sure it does not reveal any private information. Does it have their real name, 
reveal their gender, their location, their age, their school, etc. Is their username associated to their school's email? If you Google their username, does anything come up? Another source of personal information which kids unknowingly reveal is through their very own profile picture. Predators often have some type of target in mind and can use profile pictures to focus on a certain individual that fits their criteria. Quite often, if the user has no profile picture of themselves, they move on to someone who does. Now, here are some rules uh, that we give to students in our school present presentation to children. Number one, if you, create, if you create a personal profile, make sure you don't give away any personal or private information. For example, creating a username and profile picture. Don't use a username that reveals your real name, age, gender, school, city, etc. Number two, don't charge your phone in your bedroom at night. Give your phone to your parents or charge it on the kitchen counter. Again, the majority of problems with kids and technology comes from unsupervised access to the internet, usually when kids bring their phones to bed. Number three, use strong passwords and tell your parents what those passwords are. Do not share your passwords with anyone else, including your best friends. Number four, if another player is making you feel uncomfortable, tell a trusted adult. Keep the lines of communication open so that your kids will go to you when they need help. Number five, set the privacy and security settings on gaming sites. Locking down privacy settings on their accounts will help eliminate a lot of the problems from inappropriate messaging from strangers to bullying and toxic comments from users they only know online. If your child is not comfortable playing with hundreds of random people that they don't know, set the settings to what they are comfortable with or turn off online gameplay completely. Number six, your parent or guardian needs to know which games you're playing, and who you are playing with. Parents should be aware of gaming handles, chat logs, private conversations. Again, look for red flags like secrecy, meeting in person, asking for a photo or a video, or asking them to receive pictures. Connecting outside of the game on a different chat platform. Kids asking to play devices in private, for example, in their bedroom, in the bathroom, or at night. You good? Now, there are certain steps we could take as parents to manage our children's game use. One, we could be on the game with your child or play the game with your child so you know what type of content they are being exposed to. Check in on their gameplay. If your child is playing a certain game for a long time, check in to see what is going on. Set game time limits. Again, it's important that your child takes breaks from the game and is not online from morning until late at night. Have a screen-free room. Having a gaming system, tablet, or phone in your child's room can be very distracting and can lead to unsupervised screen time and gameplay. Have replacement activities so your child has something else to focus on besides their phone. Things like outdoor activities. Give them chores have them play sports, or have family outings and leave your phones behind. Now we're gonna talk about social media. If you are going to allow your child on social media, you need to ask yourself, are my kids safe on social media? And are my kids happy on social media? We have to be aware of the contents our kids are viewing on social media, and we need to educate them about making smart decisions. Many parents aren't aware about age restrictions on social media. If your child is starting out on social media, they need safe guidance. We really stress the importance of waiting until your child is at least 13 years of age before they have a social media account of their own. Social media sites are geared towards older children and require a certain maturity level and a level of responsibility on behalf of the user. The majority of problems that schools contact the police about involve social media, whether it be threats between students, online bullying, distribution of nude images, sex extortion, etc. The majority of the time, the parents of the students involved have no idea 
about what is happening on their child's social media account. Sometimes they had no idea their child even had a social media account at all. If your son or daughter is starting out on social media, you can create the social media account in your name and have full access to it. You can then change the profile or username to whatever you want afterwards and let your son or daughter use the account that you have full access to. As a parent, you need to be aware of which of your of who your kids are chatting with, what videos they are being exposed to, and what pages they are following. Again, we really stress the importance of waiting until your child is older to have social media. But even kids that are 13 need parental supervision and guidance with these platforms. They should not get a free pass just because they meet the minimum age criteria. Private versus public. On your child's social media accounts, ensure you set the privacy settings to what you and your child are comfortable with. All social media accounts automatically set the profile settings to public, and the user must go into account settings and manually change the account to private. On public accounts, anyone with a profile or the application can see your account, including photos, their bio, comments, and videos. You will not get notified if and when someone looks at your profile. Private profiles allow the user to not only private profiles allow the user to only allow people they add to view at the profile. It does not prevent bad things from occurring, but it lessens the chance of it happening. However, even in private social media profiles, you need to talk to your kids about the private information that they reveal in their account. So now I'm going to talk about some of the most popular social media apps with kids and what parents need to know about them. Now, this is Snapchat. Snapchat is a popular messaging app that lets users exchange pictures and videos called snaps that are meant to disappear after they are viewed. This whole idea of snapping, sharing, and then quickly moving on has a massive appeal for kids. Snapchat is one of the most popular social media apps with people under 18. However, it also creates a lot of issues. For one, the app gives the users a false sense of security in sending inappropriate pictures, believing that the picture will disappear in a few seconds. The person receiving the picture can easily take a screenshot or use another device to take a photo of the image. Another issue is location setting dangers. Snap Maps is a feature within the app that reveals the user's exact location in real time to the user's followers. You can manually turn this setting off or switch to ghost mode, which allows you to see the map but not be seen by others. However, Snap Maps is activated by default and has to be manually switched off by the user. The risk with, Snapchat, with, the risk with Snap Maps is a child having their location seen by all of their friends, since some of their Snapchat contacts may not be people they know in real life. That's why it is important to see who your child's contacts are on Snapchat, as it can reveal where they live, go to school, and routes taken to school, etc. Another feature on Snapchat parents need to know about is the Snapchat My Eyes Only feature. This allows the users to save images, videos, etc., behind a passcode so that no one else can see them, similar to a Vault app. So to access the Snapchat My Eyes Only feature, you will want to open the Snapchat app, this ghost icon, by pressing on it on their phone. After pressing it, it will take you to a live camera feature, which looks like this. Press on the two cards next to the camera button. And this will take you to the Snapchat memories. This will take you to all past pictures or snaps saved on the device. Scroll to the right where it says, for my eyes only. Once you enter the correct passcode, the vault will open and hidden photos and videos can be viewed. Now, sometimes kids will put content into the vault simply because they don't want some of their friends to see personal snaps of themselves or their family, and they just don't want it to pop up on Snapchat memories. Either way, it is good to be aware that this function is there. 
Now, these are only a few of the features on the Snapchat app. Many different, there are many different apps have features and settings for hiding images, videos, et cetera. For example, private mode on phones. Learn about the apps your kids are downloading. And if you are allowing your child to have a device, learn about all of the functions and capabilities of that device. One more piece of information about Snapchat is that you can now access your Snapchat account from any browser. So your child doesn't even need a phone or the app to access it. They can access it from any Chromebook or device with a search feature on it. Instagram. Instagram is another very popular social media app with kids. It is a photo slash video based platform where kids can follow their friends, celebrities, influencers, etc. However, there are concerns with kids being exposed to mature content not appropriate for their age level. There are also concerns with anonymous people contacting your child and sending messages and pictures directly to them. Anyone can direct message you even if you don't know them. If you are allowing your child to use Instagram, make sure you lock down the security settings and be aware of who they're chatting with and what content they're viewing. Instagram is quite often used in bullying situations in schools uh, where students will post embarrassing pictures of other kids to, and or create accounts dedicated to bullying other student, students. In one example, I was called to a school involving students bullying another classmate on Instagram. In this matter, a student created an anonymous Instagram account encouraging the targeted student in the school to commit suicide. In this account, they posted horrific memes depicting suicidal acts and they used the actual targeted student's name. This account was not discovered by the school until one of the suspect's friends told the principal about the Instagram account that was circulating. Now, these students were not in high school or university. These were kids in grade six, spreading very graphic and disturbing content within the school. None of the parents involved had any idea that this was going on with their children's social media accounts. Please monitor your child's activity on Instagram and talk about these types of situations and the ramifications they might have. On Instagram, you also have the ability to make multiple fake profiles under one account. You can check to see if there are any hidden profiles linked to your child's account by going to their Instagram homepage and holding down the small profile picture icon at the bottom right of the screen. You can also do a search on one of their photos to see where else it appears online. By doing so, by doing this, you can find out if they're using that photo on another Instagram account or on another platform. The easiest way to do this is to do a reverse image search by signing into Instagram through a Chrome browser and then right-clicking on the post or picture or profile photo, which will bring up the option to search image, images which, with a Google lens, which you see on the left. Click and drag a square around the image you wanna search. Any matching photos will appear in the right panel. And another security feature you can incorporate into their account is simply by turning off comments on any posts that they post on Instagram. Discord. This is another very popular app with middle school and high school age kids. Uh, the Discord app is a very popular way for kids to chat with friends while playing Fortnite, Minecraft, or Among Us. The main draw to Discord is its streamlined interface. It allows kids to communicate with their real life friends when playing a virtual game together. The other main draw for Discord is privacy. Teens can use Discord to avoid public chat in games. Sometimes in public chat rooms in games, unknown individuals can be demeaning, toxic, or can share explicit content with other users. Although Discord is primarily, primarily based in private chat groups, it's important to be aware that strangers can still contact your child and could expose your child to criminal activity, sexually explicit material, and other content not meant for children via direct message. In fact, according to the National Center on Sexual Exploitation based in the US, the Discord app was named as a major contributor to the sexual exploitation of children. 
one of the difficulties making Discord safe for, ch for children is content moderation. Because most of it is done on the individual server, groups can have different standards as to what content they allow. Problems and inappropriate material can be reported directly to Discord, but that takes time, and your child may be exposed to inappropriate content before it's taken down by the app. Another problem with Discord is that it makes it easy for predators to contact children. Like any place on the internet where you can meet strangers, people on Discord can lie about who they are. Predators can stalk children by chatting with them in a kid-friendly channel, then taking the conversation to direct messages which aren't moderated. This method was identified by detectives in our Internet Child Exploitation Unit as a common way Winnipeg school-age kids have been targeted by predators. A predator, often from a different country, will join a private server and join in on group chat or gameplay, and will often chat and play under the guise of being a younger person. The predator will target one of the individuals in the private server, again, looking for characteristics that fit their vulnerability profile. Again, low self-esteem, risk-taking behavior, lack of parental supervision, et cetera, is what they look for. The predator will then try to persuade that target to send them a naked picture of themselves, after which the extortion begins. Predators will even try to use recorded chat texts that the child has posted as a means for blackmail. Oftentimes, predators will take a screenshot of text chat written by the child victim. The child may have written something inappropriate in the chat log, and the predator will use this chat for extortion. So sometimes a compromising photo from the child isn't even necessary for the extortion to begin. Sometimes the child victim is lulled into a false sense of security because the interaction is through a live stream. However, oftentimes a live stream will be recorded by the predator. The best thing you could do to counter the dangers of Discord is to keep kids out until they are at least 13. We can't stress this enough and communicate with your children about the dangers of Discord. YouTube. YouTube is a popular app for young children as well as teenagers and young adults. YouTube is an app where users can spend endless hours learning to play guitar, watching funny viral videos, discovering new music, and perhaps accidentally seeing something inappropriate. Parents view YouTube as a safe option. For example, kids YouTube. However, after speaking with members of our ICE unit, there have been issues with young children uploading nude videos of themselves onto their YouTube account. Often children create the video thinking they are being funny, for example, showing intimate areas of their body to the camera and then uploading it, uploading the video to YouTube. This is why we strongly suggest you are present when your child is on YouTube. Students may see content or hear words or subjects that are not appropriate for their age, no matter what parent settings have been set. A YouTube is user generated and relies on users to flag videos that violate the YouTube terms of service. For example, violence, nudity, encouraging danger, hate speech, etc. The next app we will talk about is TikTok. Well, TikTok is a social media app that allows users to watch and create videos that are 15 to 60 seconds. The built-in effects icon make it easy for users to add filters, songs, effects, and sound bites without the need for any additional apps. So what do parents need to know about the TikTok app? It's easy for students to come across mature content not appropriate for their age level. TikTok challenges are popular on the app and they can range from funny and innocent to dangerous and illegal. Predators target children on TikTok and communicate with kids via comments on their videos, direct messaging, and with gift emojis. Predators will use gift emojis on children to attempt to bribe them to perform more explicit private videos. Gift emojis can range from a few dollars to a few hundred dollars. Predators from TikTok can also show up anywhere and follow your child onto other platforms like Instagram and Facebook. According to a BBC News article, TikTok is failing to suspend the accounts of people sending sexual messages to teenagers and children. 
Hundreds of sexually explicit comments have been found on videos posted by children as young as nine. So how can you be safe on TikTok? Download the app, create your own TikTok account, watch your first video or more, then determine if it's safe for your family. Tell your children to come talk to you or a trusted adult if they're ever contacted by a stranger on TikTok. Use features in the TikTok account to help limit what your child sees. Digital well-being and family pairing. Family pairing on TikTok allows parents and teens to customize their, their safety settings based on the individual needs. A parent can link their TikTok account to their teens and set control controls including daily screen time. Parents can also turn search and direct messaging off and check your child's inbox to see what messages are being sent to them. We tell students in our school presentations what to do when they're put in an uncomfortable situation. We want them to be properly prepared to deal with this situation. For an example, I had an incident where I was called to a school to speak with a grade nine student who sent nude images to someone she did not know on Instagram. She was afraid of what the person might do with the photos and instantly regretted the decision. When asked why she sent them, she said she did not want to and only sent them because this unknown user kept pressuring her to do so. In other words, she was put in an uncomfortable situation and she did not know how to deal with it. She ended up sending the photos so that the user would leave her alone. However, the problem got worse. After sending the photos, the unknown Instagram follower harassed her even more for additional images. This happened for months because she did not know who to turn to for help. She did not want to tell her parents for fear of her phone being taken away. Eventually, she told a teacher who contacted the police for help. Again, these are the kinds of situations kids can find themselves in on social media. It may come from someone they are dating or from a random follower. It is so important that we teach them how to handle uncomfortable situations and show them where they can get help. The last thing we want our children to do is not go to us for help for fear of getting in trouble. So this is what we tell kids to do when they're put in an uncomfortable situation. Repeat yourself if necessary and be firm with your decision. Blame your parents. You can say they have internet monitoring software or they're calling you for dinner. Tell them to blame their parents to get out of the situation. Discontinue all contact off every social media platform and block them so they can't message you. Report, tell your parents, tell the site, police may need to be notified. And again, review your privacy settings. Now we're going to talk about Bill C-13. Um, these are some of the laws involved with social medias and some of the problems we have seen from both sides from both kids and adults involving distribution of intimate images or nude images. Bill C-13 was introduced in March of 2015, making it illegal for anyone to distribute intimate images of another person without their consent. This has been one of the biggest problems among middle school and high school age kids. Typically from my experience as an officer in schools, this happens with couples where one partner will put pressure on the other for nudes. In one scenario I dealt with at a Winnipeg high school, boyfriend told his girlfriend that he would break up with her if she didn't send him any nude photos. Eventually she did send one picture to him and she told him not to show anyone else. A few months later, they broke up and to get back at her, the boyfriend sent the photo to all of his friends and now the picture was out. Under this bill, the boyfriend could be criminally charged by the police due to the fact that he had knowingly shared the photo without consent. Now I share this story with high school students to show them what could potentially happen if a nude photo is sent. Many times the victims in these scenarios are too embarrassed or ashamed to come forward. We want to show victims that they are not alone in this and there are ways that they can get help. They can talk to their parent or guardian, their teacher, their guidance counselor, or school resource officer. Again, your school resource officer is there to help for these situations. In this incident from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, six teens were found guilty 
of sharing intimate images of girls in their high school. A total of 16 electronic devices were seized through the course of the investigation. One phone had an app called Safekeeper, and it contained 61 intimate images that appeared to be screenshots sent through Snapchat. A judge sentenced six male teenagers in provincial court in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, for sharing intimate images of 19, 19 girls without their consent. So please talk to your kids about sharing questionable images. Sometimes kids or teens will share and spread images out of spite. Talk to your kids about how their actions can permanently and negatively impact their lives and the lives of others. Extortion cases online. The danger of online extortion is still very real, especially in middle school and high schools. After speaking with detectives in our ICE unit, a common online extortion scam being done in Winnipeg is where a criminal, sometimes from another country, will send follow requests to all the students in a school. The scammer will use a fake account, usually with a fake profile picture of an attractive teenager. After one of them accepts the follow request, the scammer will try to build rapport and start an online relationship with the sole intention of getting the victim to send a nude photo of themselves. The scammer will try to give the potential victim a false sense of security, telling the victim that it will be deleted because it's on Snapchat, or the scammer might send a fake nude picture of themselves that they just got from the internet. Once the victim sends a nude picture of themselves, the extortion begins. The scammer will threaten to send the nude photo of the victim to all of her friends and schoolmates unless the victim sends money to an anonymous Venmo account or something similar. Many times after the victim sends money, the scammer will demand more or may send out the picture anyways. We really need to stop these scams from happening by educating ourselves about how these scams work. Many of these extortion incidents end with very tragic consequences. So here's a video from CBC and cybertip.ca, an organization that the Winnipeg police work with to combat sextortion. In this news clip, they talk about sextortion crimes happening in our own province. An alarming statistic in this video from cybertip.ca is that this year, complaints of sextortion have increased 150% and 90% of the targets being teenage boys. Through the store, in this small room, analysts at cybertip.ca are chasing down sexual predators. This is essentially the team that is receiving the reports from the Canadian public. Following up on rising complaints of sextortion. From uh, January to, uh, to June, um, it, we'd already seen a 150% increase from the previous six months. About 90% of those targets? teenage boys. With the boys, the difference is that um, these individuals really don't have that sexual interest, but they have the, um, the drive to make money. Much of it is happening through social media platforms like Instagram and Snapchat. Earlier this year in Manitoba, 17-year-old Daniel Lintz accepted a message that appeared to be sent by a young woman on Snapchat. He was convinced to send an explicit message, then came demands for money and threats to send the picture to family and friends. His parents spoke to CBC Radio's The Current. The blackmailing began. You know, uh, he attempted to make the payments, which just makes things worse in most cases from what we've learned. And then, uh, you know, three hours after it began, it was over. He took his life that same day. A story that doesn't surprise this youth advocate who says reliance on social media is increasingly making teens vulnerable. With COVID and how the world's become more virtual, there's more pressure on people my age to kind of shift into the online world, specifically, you know, online relationships. While some of this is domestic, a lot of it is coming from overseas, raising warnings from police globally, as well as advice. Cease all contact right away and contact your local police. Those are cases that go reported yeah. How yeah. many go unreported? Yeah, we don't even have a number on what goes unreported, unfortunately. Um, those would be the youth that are trying to manage these situations on their own. Last month, the federal government restarted attempts to draft new online harms legislation, in part to help protect kids online. Legislation it's long promised, but can't say when it will deliver.
Cameron McIntosh, CBC News, Winnipeg. This is the most recent reported case of sextortion ending with the tragic suicide of a 17-year-old boy. I really wanted to share this with you because it shows that the need for education on social media is still very important with young people. Daniel Lintz from Pilot Mount, Manitoba was a victim of cyber blackmail or sextortion. According to his father, in February, he got a message on Snapchat from someone who appeared to be a teenage girl. The girl coerced him into sending an explicit image. Within minutes of sending the picture to the girl, he was being blackmailed. Terrified about the picture going out, Daniel took his own life within three hours of sending the original picture. In an interview with Dan Derek Lintz, Daniel's father said he had talked to his son about safety online. However, he believes this happened so quickly that Daniel felt this was his only option. Continue these conversations with your kids. Make sure your kids understand that if they do make a mistake, they can go to you for help. Are you a victim of sextortion? What to do if you are a victim of sextortion or if you know someone who is a victim? Stay calm and don't panic. Immediately report what has happened to cybertip.ca or contact police in your jurisdiction. If it is happening to you, the person is more than likely doing the same thing to others and needs to be reported to the proper authorities. Immediately stop all communication. Deactivate, but don't delete any of the accounts you are using to communicate with the individual. Pay attention to any of the other accounts you may have linked as the offender may attempt to contact you there as well. Never pay money and never send additional nudes. Your situation will not get better by doing either of these things. If you have paid money, check to see if it has been collected. If not, quickly cancel the payment. So three steps to improve screen time. Um, number one is education. Educate yourself on what your kids are using. Parents need to access their own relationship. Sorry, parents need to assess their own relationship with technology and recognize parental behavior has a powerful influence on their child's behavior. Parents' use of screens and smartphones significantly influences how their kids and teens use them. Prepare your child or teen for confusing or uncomfortable situations, such as sites asking for personal or financial information, cyberbullying or exclusion, and adult themed content. Review situations where they should ask for help. Communicate early and often. Talk to your kids about the dangers we have discussed online. Talk about anything and everything, including pedophiles, bullying, extortion, etc. If you don't have these talks with your kids, predators will have these talks with your kids. Get involved and ask questions about apps and sites they like to visit. Be open, approachable, and understanding about what kids are up to online. This way, it makes it easier for them to come to you with any problems they are experiencing online and are happy to ask for advice. Again, be a positive role model for them. Parental monitoring. Parental monitoring should be active. For example, co-viewing, discussing, playing together, following each other, education and guidance. Technology should be used in public parts of the house. Know all passwords. Know your child or teen's social media sites and follow them. Now, I am the first to admit that there is no 100% foolproof way to safeguard your child online. As a parent, you will make mistakes and your child will also make mistakes online. What is important is that you talk to your child about these mistakes and work through them together. Now your child can talk to a professional crisis line counselor on what's called kids help phone. Your child can remain anonymous and get professional help from a counselor on the phone or even via text message. It is free, anonymous, and confidential and is available 24 seven. Here's some other great resources for parents for information on social media safety. Cybertip.ca is an agency that the Winnipeg police work with. They receive and process tips from the public about potentially illegal material online, such as sexual abuse images and videos, child trafficking, shared intimate images, online luring, 
and other areas of child exploitation. Smart Social is a website that contains app guides and expert tips for parents regarding popular social media apps and online games. Canadian Centre for Child Protection is a resource your child can turn to if they have an image online that they want to get taken down. Then there's the Winnipeg Police Service. We are here for victims of crime, whether it's in person or crimes online like sextortion, threats, bullying, luring, etc. If you have a school resource officer in your school division, remember you and your child can go to your school resource officer for help and guidance with problems online. Our focus is on the safety and well being of kids in schools. Thank you very much for joining us and listening to what I had to say. If your child has not had a presentation about online safety from the Winnipeg Police Service, your child's school can contact their school resource officer to provide this presentation. If your child goes to a school without a school resource officer, your school principal or teacher can book a police presentation on the Winnipeg Police website. So we're now going to take a one minute break uh, before we open it up for questions. So I'll ask you if you do have a question so to direct your question uh, via the text on the on the um, on the chat to the host of this uh, of this Zoom presentation. Okay. What do I do if I want my child to send an intimate image of himself? So the first question I got from the chat is, what do I do if my child has sent an intimate image and needs help? Uh, so the first thing you do is talk to your child about it. Talk about what happened. Uh, again, it all depends on the circumstances and how that image came out. Uh, find out what platform that your child sent the image on and who they sent it to. Uh, were they being asked by somebody that they didn't know about the image. Um, what was it a friend asking for it? You can contact the Canadian Center for Child Protection on information on how to get that image taken down. Um, if it's a situation of child luring and somebody is asking your child for intimate images, um, I would contact the Winnipeg police about it because this may involve an investigation. So again, contact your child Block that person from sending any more messages to your child. Save the evidence by taking screenshots of that person's username and what account they're using. 
contact the Winnipeg police and we'll have to get a hold of the platform, the social media platform or gaming platform that they're using. Yeah. My kids do not have a lot of internet access. What is the safe, what is the safe way to introduce them to the internet? So if your, if your child is just getting started on the internet and doesn't have much internet access, what is a safe way you can introduce them to the internet? Now, again, the internet is a great thing that's great for entertainment for children. However, it just needs parental monitoring and some, some moderation and limits. So just monitor what your kids are watching on YouTube or kids YouTube or whatever streaming platform they're using. Again, we really stress to wait until your child is older before they start social media. But if they are into online gaming or social media, make sure you have full access to their account. If your child likes playing games like Minecraft, they could still play the, great, the game Minecraft and just play the offline version. They could still do all the great things that they do in Minecraft, but do it offline without communicating with strangers. So again, parental monitoring of what they're doing online, who they're communicating with, and um, doing it in public areas of the house, and setting game time and social media limits. Next question. Um, what do I do if my teenager won't tell me their passwords or social media? What do I do if my teen teenager won't tell me their passwords for social media? This is a problem that's uh, encountered by parents a lot. Um, if your teenager is well into social media and, uh, and you have not been monitoring their social media and now all of a sudden are demanding to see their passwords and what's on their social media account, expect resistance from your teenager. Um, you, can, you can enforce this because you are paying for your child's phone and you can take the phone away. You are the parent, you're still allowed to do that, even though your child is using that for social media. Um, if you do that, have replacement activities available so that they will have something else to focus on. Otherwise you'll be in for a fight with your teenager. I had uh, a mother from a presentation um, ask me about that. I talked to her afterwards about how it went and she said when she took the phone away, there was a lot of resistance. So having some type of replacement activity, um, take them out on a family activity, take them out on an app, outdoor activity, get them involved in sports so they're not focusing on their phone. Uh, one other parent I talked to who wanted to take her phone away when her daughter was in bed with it, uh, again, encountered a lot of resistance. However, she emailed me afterwards and her daughter thanked her after for taking the phone away when she went to bed. So although she was resistant at the time, she was very thankful because it kept her out of all the drama when she's trying to go to bed and she was able to sleep much better. So again, it can be tough at first to get access to your child's social media accounts, but again, have replacement activities and communicate with your child, your son or daughter about why it's so important. And again, you're the parent, you're paying for their phone. You can take that away if you want. Great question. Yeah. Do police always need to be involved to solve these problems? So the question was, do police always need to be involved to solve these problems? Um, there are lots of ways where it can be solved without the police. However, sometimes if it's a very serious situation, police do need to be involved. Sometimes we get called just to offer guidance and provide information to help them through it. Other times uh, it does lead to an investigation. But a lot of the times the problem can be solved if somebody is harassing you online or asking you for uh, inappropriate images, if you just simply block that person and move on with your life, a lot of times it ends there. Where police need to be involved is when it turns into a child luring situation, a photo has been sent and now they're using that as blackmail or as sextortion. So sometimes police do need to be involved other times, they can just block that person and move on. Um, how many more? Are there? Okay, we'll take one more question. Who can I contact to help with Xbox gaming privacy? Tried YouTube, but I get overwhelmed. Family and friends are out of the question. 
So the question was, who can you contact to manage Xbox gaming privacy? And this could be a little bit tricky because um, Xbox Live allows you to play online with multiple people, depending on which game they are playing. Uh, again, it can be overwhelming, the information. If you go on YouTube to try to limit the settings, you will get the information. If you just Google how to set the privacy settings on Xbox Live or try to watch a YouTube video um, or go on to the Xbox site itself, usually Xbox has a customer service line that you can contact via text or by phone to set the settings to your comfort level. But again, it depends on what game that your child is playing um, and what app or, or program they're using to set the restrictions. Because some games like John Madden Football are a lot different from other games where they're playing with numerous people at the same time, like Rust and Call of Duty. But again, that information is there. Uh, it may be a little bit difficult at first to get all the answers you're looking for, but the information is there and it just takes a little bit of digging. And if you are, if your child is playing Xbox Live and you're concerned what's being said, don't let them use a headset. Uh, let them play so that you could hear what's being said. Monitor the chats that are happening. Um, have the gaming console in a public area of the house, not their bedroom. So you could see what content they're they're playing and viewing online and what's being said to them. So again, having it in a public area of the house, parental monitoring, just digging and do a little, doing a little bit of research will get you those answers. Okay, uh, we have gone a little bit over our time limit. I'm going to end it there. Thank you all for joining in on our presentation. And um, thanks for tuning in. Bye.